The term Feast of Famine really does come up a lot for junglers. When you play something carnivorous, you know that wants to get ahead, you try and make these highly risky plays invading ganks, and if it doesn't pay off, well, you think, okay, I'm not fed, the game's over, I can't do anything. That is the wrong way to think about it. You can be a Feast of Famine jungler and have multiple attempts and multiple openings to get yourself ahead, to get yourself fed, and to actually accentuate the game state such that you can win by 20 minutes. Because remember, carnivorous jungling, while you don't necessarily have to always be a quote-unquote carnivore jungler, the playstyle can be applied to certain specific archetypes, which you would have seen on your screen now. And obviously, when you go for aggressive invades, whether it's a level 2, whether it's a level Level three, if you end up not getting your head through that particular mechanism through that moment, like in this Kha'Zix's case, it can really feel like, okay, well, you know what? Now I'm going to struggle to get into this game, and that's the wrong way to think about it. Let's look at a perfect example, and this will be through a higher ELO player's Smurf warm-up account. Obviously, I'm going to do a bit more of a coaching spin on this because being able to dynamically move around everything uh, will be really, really useful. What the Nidalee is going to want to do against a Lilia, and for this reason I am uh, not showing the frames just for a bit of privacy, the rest of the videos should have all the names so you can look up the match histories, which will be linked below. We're going to have here, you know, an ability against the farming jungler to get out ahead of the action really, really quickly, okay? And now obviously this is a perfect example because it's a better player against people that are not really ready to deal with it, but at the same time these are still D3, D2 uh, junglers that, that, that this Nidalee is facing, okay? And when that's the situation, you know that they're still good in comparison to your plats and to your golds. And so if you're trying to do this kind of Feast of Famine play style to climb, the cheese factor and the ability to be hyper aggressive when executed properly is absolutely insane in terms of how you can tilt enemies and of course get yourself juiced. So she's going to go ahead here and invade the Nidalee, take the blue and the grump obviously because we know the Lilia started on the top side. And this is where the most important thing happens. Counter jungling or invades like this always work best when you translate them to level 2 gains, okay? They always work best, the spear misses, but that's just a Yankos uh, issue. You know, as long as you can get this gank away here, get your ADC, 2 kills, 2 assists, it doesn't matter, get yourself 2 kills, just get the kills, burn the sums, get this Draven lane under control, okay, it's perfect. The enemy Lily is not going to be able to react to this just yet, specifically when there's no prior in the mid lane. Now the Lilia was actually going to vertical jungle, but decides, okay, look, Nidalee's just going to cut through the river and collapse on me. And that's what's most important about this, okay? The Nidalee rumps to the mid lane here. We're going to go for the Vex here. We are able to flash, which means we can pounce again to get into AA range, and we can AA spear. We can put a trap down. We can keep auto-attacking. Remember, good Nidalee's keep auto-attacking, keep auto-attacking, chuck the spear. Beautifully done. The Soraka moves to the mid lane, the Zyra moves to the mid lane, so you can't say one support roamed and one didn't. Excellently done, okay? Now, with level 4, the Lilia can obviously do this, see this, and then want to collapse it vertical, but with a Feast of Famine playstyle, what are you going to do? Are you going to seriously just vertical and then kind of go back to, uh, to your right side here? No. You're going to cut across the mid lane and collapse on her if she's even daring to do this. So the Lilia is going to completely ominous and a kind of terrible position in terms of her decision making. She can do nothing about it. So we're gonna speed up a little bit here and show you how the Nidalee translates this to basically a game ending condition. And then I'm gonna show you a situation where this doesn't happen, but the Feast of Famine playstyle can still thrive if you understand your windows of opportunity, as it were. And as Lily against the mid lane, this is big, right? You look here and you immediately loop into their jungle because this angle of approach is what's gonna win things for you. Now there's a complete disrespect here by both of them. They saw the Nidalee potentially in the top side here, or should know that she has to go do a blue side. Uh, just no respect whatsoever. And the Nidalee, because she's fed, because of that feast early on, she's able to keep this pressure up. But if you don't keep this pressure up, and this is what happens a lot to more inexperienced junglers, they simply don't keep doing this. They don't do this. They will farm or look to repeat gank bottom lane. They just default to regular jungling. And the enemy jungler can now sequence her camps, make a gank somewhere else, and catch up. A feast style, feast of famine style, is about relentlessly applying that pressure. So now we're 5 zero, 0 we're gonna go straight into the Lich Bane, which in terms of win rates and snowball is one of the best you can go. Obviously Dark Seal plus Magi's is the dream. We do lose a little bit of our Raptors, but who really cares? Now because the Lilia didn't adhere to a proper outside-in rule uh, at all this game, and really do anything showing signs of life, Nidalee collapses and says, outside-in rule. I'm gonna drive by my Raptors and secure those, then I'm gonna go and take that Scuttle, and if you're on it and you can't fight it and you die, you know, is not so good. Uses this to dive the bottom lane, accentuating this bottom lane lead. Now, what would you do if you're a typical jungler? Let's be honest. Most of you would try and force this, okay? A little early anyway, but also they're kind of low. You don't want to 
give them a comeback mechanism. You would fall back to your Krugs and maybe your Red or maybe you go back to mid lane. But the Feast of Famine playstyle is about just carnivorous, aggressive jungling. Here we go. We're going to set a trap. I love this. This is why Smurfs do so well against you. This is why Smurfs dominate you in those games where you have someone clearly Smurfing against you. And I always, you know, I understand this is not what you want to face. But, in, you know, Diamond Plus, you accept the reality of the situation that high yield players will have warm-up accounts, tilt accounts, learning accounts, uh, and they will be able to do this to you. So you have to learn from this if you want Master Plus, because that's the only way... That's the only place for you to go, right? Um, and these kind of traps are really great. The Draven's completely tilted. Uh, Zarya's gonna snack that one away from the Kaiser. And now the, the Nidalee just has total and utter domination and control over the map. All right? Just because of a good invade, good gank afterwards, and obviously cutting off the Lilia multiple times and preventing her uh, getting anywhere. Now, of course, we go to the mid lane again, transition play. We're living in the rivers. We're living in their jungle. Look at this. Soraka's just level. Like, what's she gonna do? There's really nothing anyone can do to this Nidalee, all right? And I'm gonna skip forward to the end of the game here, not the end of the game, but just like, let's say to 50 minutes or so. And you can see here, all of a sudden, we are 10 0 with 18 stacks. And again, just hovering, just hovering, just hovering. No concern about farming too much, just sequencing camps when we can sequence them. Um, the top lane has now moved on down, he's level six, he's struggling as well. Uh, Vex is able to get a kill back. We reposition here over the wall, which is not exactly what you wanna do. Swapping form into autos with Nidalee is so crucial and it's something uh, that most Nidalee players cannot do here, but, you know, a spear <laughs> to the face, plus an auto and a heal, and off we go. I mean, 13 0 3, 25 stacks plus Lich Bane, Feast of Famine done perfectly. Now, what happens if the Famine is a bit more present than it is in this game? Oh, wait, one more. One more for the album. Nah, we just take the Grom, that's sneaky. Okay, so I lied, we actually have one more from this player in, on his main champion, excuse me. Red Raptors into Blue Grum, a 4 cam flexi clear when you kind of don't want to show up too soon to the top side perhaps you're against a jungler you don't want to play against 1v1 you know we're sequencing top side here in this case the nocturne and what it allows you to do is flex into a reverse clear down okay into bottom lane gank it's a nice strategy if you don't anticipate invades but at the same time you want to keep your grunt wolf sequencing tight without you know coin flipping a late invade on your blue so you get the blue out of the way into the Grump, into the Wolves, and now if they invade, you know, you're already on your way down. But we can obviously use it, and Echo's graded this as well, just to get 16 CS under our belt, get ourselves out of the jungle before three minutes, into a gank, into a crab, right? It gives us that potential, but it also allows us to, you know, maybe do some invades on an enemy jungle. So we're going to go ahead here and show you what happens with the Feast of Famine playstyle when things don't exactly go away, but yet he still gets giga, giga fed. Top lane coin flip. As it is, as it happens. We know the Nocturne will be showing up here. We see him on the map here, 20 CS with a red. The Kha'Zix now can decide to straight up go and, and fight. Like, this is not what we want to do. Okay, so this is why we have these warm-up accounts, because <laughs> this awareness is absolutely, it's terrible. And this will happen to most of you. This is a very coachable moment. I see this so often, uh, even in, yes, with Diamond players, where they just miss this information because they're so tunnel vision on the Camille. And it happens a lot. For whatever reason, you die because of your own mistake, which will happen, of course. You die because of rotational mistakes, which, of course, will happen. How do we still end up getting nine kills and really snowballing? Now, the Nocturne gets our dubs. He gets a top scuttle. He gets a bottom scuttle. What can our Kha'Zix do here in this game? Let's have a look. So, we're going to basically try and shadow this bottom lane here, but they're already completely dead. Everyone's dying. Uh, you know, Kha'Zix can definitely scale and just he needs to wait for his itemization. And that's the thing about these... These junglers, right? And so what he's going to do here, remember, you're always going to get as fed as you need to, provided you're patient and you keep looking for those windows. Look at this. The Cassiopeia goes down to a ward, obviously, and then will now return to the lane. So we're going to cut through here and just help the push a little bit. We're low mana. We're a little bit close to, not quite close to six, but getting there. Cassiopeia completely disrespects this possibility. The Nocturne shows up to fight in a minion wave. We flash a little bit too late for that fear tether. It does go through. We die again. Nocton's tanking minions, but he does not care. This is looking not so good. Uh, maybe something can happen here. Do we get to clean up? We do. All right, so from our pressure, just like in the last game, from our pressure, our laners can thrive. From our pressure, our laners can get fed. And when you are in an elo where that coin flip stat check is most important, then, you know, even by accident, if your laners are fed, that's good for us. However... We're still 0 2, 2 but we have a serrated Dirk now at least. So now we know our damage spikes are coming through, okay? And that's the most important thing. If you're going to go for your sort of first strike rune set, then making sure we are getting our investment is obviously very good. And Futures Market is is, is really broken. So in these situations, right, you're thinking, well, Feast of Famine, I'm Nidalee, I'm, I'm, I'm Kha'Zix. 
I'm something that, that kind of wants to get ahead and I'm not really feeling ahead right now. In fact, we're down 3k gold. The worst thing you can do is result to farming, to sitting in your jungle, to not using the lead you have. Look at this. We have surrendered Dirk. We know he might be on the top set here. We're going to go try something. Can we do something? No. Do I have a way out of the situation? Yes. So I leave. All right. You're always looking for this window to get ahead. And now from Nocturne's perspective, do you really want to coin flip this with Ari having prior? No. So we create ourselves a little bit of prior with a pre-chunk on that scuttle. Go ahead and snack it. Camille's moving down. She is six. All right. Ari's in a bit of a tight bind here. We're able to get it. We'll have the auto unseen threat passive onto the Camille. She's going to be forced to ult and disengage. Ari's now rotating. We're going to face check this bush. Oof, a little bit risky for sure, but Feast of Famine. Fine. This is good. We're looking for the plays. Yes, there can be a downside in terms of losing out to farming jungles, but you know where he's doing it, right? He's moving into his jungle. He's compromising his sequencing. He's wasting his time. All of these are great things when you're against Lilies and Nocturnes and things like that. Now, this is, of course, for me, not the best, not the best use of time. We're obviously worried about the Nocturne 6, so he's shadowing that, but we really want to get 6 ourselves. It's better to focus on 6 ourselves and get our Evolve path. Now, we see Botline thinking we're topside, going for a Giga Dive. 5-0-1 Samira. This is where opportunity will strike, and you have to use it. Look for those dives between towers. Look for those low HP targets. That W should connect level 6. Thank you so much. Let's evolve them claws. All right. We're on the map now. We're on the map. Nocturne says, I'm going to ult you. And we say, but I just evolved my claws. Your ISO damage. You're in a minion wave. You're tanking the Krugs. I have smite. I have our evolve. Uh, sorry. Our, <laughs> our leveled up. Um, and Serrated Dirk. I beat you. And this is the key thing. When you're Feast of Famine Jungler, please know your item spikes. Serrated Dirk. Duskblade, Essence Reaver Rengar, the Lich Bane, 25 stack Magi Nidalee. If you don't know your item break even points, and when you're strong, you're never going to be able to feast. But look at this. This looked like, for a second, we were never going to feast. But let's go forward a little bit, right? We're still 2-2-2, but now we have Duskblade. So, we can farm a little bit faster. If we need to give up a dragon, we'll give up a dragon. We see the Nocturne and the Cassio mid lane. We leave our camps, we react. Feast of Famine Junglers, you have to react to the action on the map. And use your damage spikes. There we go. All the way through. Beautiful final uh, W there, actually. Very, very nicely done. Remember that Unseen Passive Threat gives you that slow as well a little bit. So once you get that through with your auto cancel on Q, uh, it should be much easier to hit the W. And we translate that kill into a Herald, right? And of course, we might give up the Dragon because of it. Because of course, this bot lane is fed. We're not going to go ahead and gank a losing lane. Okay? So yes, he's resorting back to farming now. But after he man managed to make some plays. Now, we use our mobility. Look at that. Boom! The Flash W. This is so smooth. 4 2 2 right? Cosmic's mechanics, when done well, it's a, big, it's a night and day difference, isn't it? It's so fluid. The animation cancels, the damage output, the, the staggering of abilities. Back to base. Okay? Now we can leave base, and we're going to go mid lane. Because we want to use our Herald. What's, what's the Nocturne going to do now? Even if he's up 20 CS, if we're the same level, and we have 1,500 more cash money gold, what's he going to do to us? Right? We have Snowball beyond control. Here he is. Bad pathing again. It's incredible the difference when you have good pathing. If he just went around the outside here to hold, good things could happen. Right? Good things could happen. But because he cuts through and the Kha'Zix is obviously a better player, he dives right in, kills him immediately. And this is something I really want you to focus on the low elo. When someone has bad pathing, punish it immediately. You have 2v1. Just absolutely kill her it will kill him it doesn't really matter who it is look at this we're trapping now ward placed seen spotted we're really fed though piece of famine we're 5 2 2 we're gonna clear this out here we go over the wall thank you so much samira excuse me you're dead there you go priority target assassinated knocked him dead 6 2 2 do you see how quickly it snowballs and if you want like more of a micro mechanical breakdown about how these sort of games can snowball please do have a look at the video linked below. I am cover I cover snowballing junglers and how to actually do it step by step. I'm just showing you the highlights here of how he's rotating to these situations. Boom. And any jungler like this, any jungler that can play this carnivorous style, this hunter style, this predator style, will be able to do this. 822. Now, when you were 022, did you think he would even be at this point down 3k gold? No, now he's up 3k gold. Because he kept looking for pressure, but he didn't int with it. That's a big difference. He didn't run into the Nocturne and die. He kind of measured his output, and when it was very clear he couldn't kill him, he bounced. And then when the Nocturne altered him, level 6, the Nocturne didn't balance those equations. And Kha'Zix, with the environment at his disposable, Razor Gould, and Serrated Dirked the Nocturne into submission. 
And in fact, a very similar situation happened on my Kindred gameplay that I just released yesterday. The Kindred struggle to get anything going and Kindreds don't always have this fallback of Raptors and Krugs, although you actually do. Yes, we want to four camp into an invade, into ganks, but if nothing is available, as long as you can physically get a crab, you can fall back to the Raptors and the Krugs, and then you can wait for that opportunity. You just have to recognize it, much like the Kha'Zix. In this case, the Kindred looked between two towers, and that was the first kill. And from this, you snowball, feast of famine. Now you go stat check, you run into their jungle, you remove the enemy jungler from the game, and you keep getting yourself a kill after kill after kill. You don't resort to AFK farming. That's a big difference. Now, what's hilarious is obviously when we think about this Feast of Famine playstyle, we definitely think about Korean Nidlis, Korean Kindreds. And I literally just went onto League of Graphs. I selected Nidli, Grandmaster Plus, Korea. And what shows up the first game? Nidli vs. Kindred. Literally, this is the first replay. I didn't even look for any other replays. I just clicked the first one, opened it, and this is what we get. Hyper Aggressive Feast of Famine. Late Invade with the Blitz Crank. Make sure we get this steal on this blue into the, into the uh, Grump here, which we can translate to a level 2 gank, but of course their laners understand this, see this, they're gonna rotate to this for sure, alright, and so the Nidalee's gonna have to be able to get out of the scenario, so Feast of M definitely has the risk, when laners rotate, we can die. So we wall hop a little bit with a Cougar Form W, and uh, we don't actually have to flash, which is good, because our bot lane reacts. Now, again, typically you'll fall back to this, and you'll relax it to this, or this, and then maybe here, and now we know that the Kindred would have seen this, does Red Raptors, instead of going down, says, okay, look, this ward has been placed, thanks to my laner, I'm gonna go for the Grump here. Nidalee says, nope. Feast of Famine, both junglers, hyper aggressive invades and collapses. It's all about the laners that rotate, and the priority that you have with it. Obviously, the Blitzcrank gets kills on the bottom side. So, you might think, okay, look, what happens in this scenario? We don't get the Grump. Crucially, we do not get the Grump. This is absolutely huge. Now we're being pushed out of our jungle. Orn says, I come, I'm Chad. Akshan says, Hello, I also rotate, the spear misses. Now the auction's gonna go in here, get it collapsed on 2v1, all right. Lee shows back up, Orn flashes over the wall. We're able to kill the Kindred, thank goodness, but the auction also dies. We are then going to be killed, potentially, most likely, definitely, by the Gragus, who's flashing over the wall to try and peel against the Orn. And this is where this Feast of Famine coin from fighting comes through. And you don't wanna play it super, super safe. You don't wanna play it super safe, you wanna play it aggressively, and you want to make sure you get fed. And this can happen multiple times. Now look, typically what would we do here? Don't go where you know they are, except because Kindred died and everyone's super low, Auction's getting a cleanup. Lazy, lazy, lazy back by the red team. Double kill for our mid laner. So Kindred tries a hyper aggressive move and ends up costing drastically the team. Now, obviously the Talia and the Gragas kind of signed their own fate so that they had to leave in a less lazy fashion. But it's still the fact of the matter that this play, this feasty or famine play is not going to cause a deep famine for the laners because we decided to make it, you know? If you're the gorilla and they're all the apes, you know, the monkeys, you're leading, leading them down a bad path to bad bananas and bad fruits. Uh, it's on you. So Kindred now says, look, Nidalee's going to be topside there finishing off that blue and taking that scuttle. Why don't I go invade this red? There's no sense of safety. There's no sense of conservative jungling. It's only hyper-aggressive. If we get the kill, if we get the red, all is good. Nidalee can kind of see this from this ward here. Akshan is just going to come straight from base. And most of the time, junglers don't pay attention to base and back timers. Very frequently, they'll overstay scenarios, take blue buffs, take red buffs, and the enemy jungler, enemy team, will show up and get kills. So that's another kill for the Akshan. Let's chuck a spear out. Boom, double kill for the Akshan. We have two assists as Nidalee, and Kindred is 0-2-1. Both junglers playing hyper-aggressive, compromised on their own experience, and the laners who played off of them get benefits. But that's not the point. The Nidalee is still going to have the most kills in the game, you see? Because at the, end, at the end of the day, we're up on experience now a little bit. The Kindred's off the map here. Bot lane's getting the benefit of having this compromised start, you know? So what you're doing in these situations is if you don't get fed, and if the enemy jungler doesn't get fed, and you're both severely compromised, you're coin flipping your laners. You're basically saying, listen guys, whoever rotates, whoever wins their lane, that's it, that's the game. And that's where the downside to this comes in, but obviously we can recontrol things nicely. Kindred's dead, push on the top side, let's go ahead. That wasn't meant to rhyme, but it does. Let's clean out jungle camps, get a level, and go gank top lane here before level 6. Because of the roams, that 5.30 minute wave doesn't give 6 immediately, okay, so they're a bit delayed, an excellently timed gank by the Nidalee. Kindred in the meantime, just sequencing up, same thing. So what can Nidalee do? Now that we know the Kindred, or we suppose the Kindred's going up, they confirm this by actually showing on the tower, we can just go gank this straight away. We have a winning bot lane. So let's snowball this winning bot lane. Don't do the Krugs. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. No hesitation. Use whatever lead you have 
to accentuate the lead of someone else in your team while you know the enemy jungle is on the opposite side. This is the biggest thing for junglers that are like this. Get yourself some kills as well. If they show up here, immediately look to do something that isn't your own crugs. All right, look to do something. Because even if it's a bit doomed with the wave state, I mean, if the wave state's doomed here, you know, you could do crugs and then gank, but it's still like you're trying to do something very, very quickly, yes? And here you're seeing in this game, what happens when we die early doesn't end the game there, especially versus a kindred uh, who also doesn't get anything. It doesn't end the game there, but that is the risk that you have with this playstyle. It, re it requires aggressive, persistent, carnivorous hunting jungle style. And you would have seen that in the first example and in the second example. But here, even when things go don't go so well, the Nidalee is able to move around the map with purpose and play against the Kindred's weakness at the moment to get herself fed and play around those winning lanes. Whereas Kindred is directly responsible for the shenanigans. As I explained before, a reverse invade here early really can hurt you. It's sometimes better just to say, look, I lost my two camps, it sucks, let me just gank the lane. You know, it sucks that Nidalee's doing this, but it's not worth the risk. For, for me, I can easily wait for that second Grom to come up at 4, 418, and I can just gank bot lane in the meantime. I'll get a bottom scuttle, I can steal some raptors and some krugs. You know, you can get a good lead if you're the kindred without forcing <laughs> this, you know, and like, this is it. You know, if they randomly walk into a bush, you want to be here, you want to be making these plays. And this is why it must be so fun to be high yellow career, but obviously it's not the most strategically sound strategy for scaling in your lower elo, which is why we always tell you just to farm a little bit. The mechanics required, the constant PvP, the jungle tracking knowledge, it's not easy to play like this and win like this all the time. Yeah, you really have to understand your champions, your itemization spikes, map flow. Uh, it's an advanced style of jungling, but... And you also don't want to coin from your lanes in low elo, because they're not going to be like this Akshan and run with it, right? They're not going to run with the lead you give them. Whereas, now nah, you know the will. So, from this, great kill here with 414, excellent collapse. When it go and snack and herald, and this game will be GG. But a few highlights of different scenarios in Feast and Fam and Jungling. If you do want to understand how to get fed and snowballed your game to the finish, click the video in the box on the top right. If you want to understand the best way to play the jungler in a balanced sense, in a ganking and farming sense, click the video in the box on the bottom left.